As the Ukraine-Russia war drags on, Russian President Vladimir Putin has decided to move one of Russia's holiest icons from a museum to a Moscow cathedral. Jesus was born in a region of color. That's right. In Bethlehem. And then you get some folks say, did you know it was black people in the Bible? My oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> the first man that was me was an African man. Gino Jennings is a prominent figure in contemporary religious discourse, known for his outspoken and often controversial views on various aspects of Christian doctrine and practice. One of the critical areas where Jennings has voiced his concerns is the traditional depiction of Jesus Christ as a white man. This portrayal, deeply ingrained in Western Christianity, has profound implications for how believers perceive religious figures, identity, and the concept of divinity itself. Jennings argues that the image of a white Jesus is not just a benign artistic choice, but a reflection of the historical and cultural dominance of white nationalism. White nationalism, in this context, refers to the systemic elevation of white cultural norms, values, and aesthetics above those of other races. This dominance has permeated many aspects of life, including religion, where the depiction of Jesus as white serves to reinforce the idea of white superiority and centrality in centrality in spiritual matters. The Garden of Eden right in Africa. was in Africa. That's right. So I said, what? Give me the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 2, and we're at verse 10. Listen. And a river. See, that's no big deal with us. Okay. No. no it's no big deal with us. Whether you black, if Jesus was white, I can accept him. Still that's accept right. him. That's right, sir. If he was yellow, I can accept him. That's, that's right. right. It's no big deal with us. That's right. It was a big deal with Europe. Amen. To understand Jennings' critique, it's essential to delve into the historical context of Jesus' image. The earliest Christian art, dating back to the first few centuries after Christ, often depicted Jesus in a variety of ethnic forms. These early images reflect the diverse communities that Christianity, that Christianity touched, from Africa to Asia and Europe. However, as Christianity became more closely tied to the Roman Empire and later European colonial powers, the image of Jesus began to homogenize into a distinctly white European form. During the Renaissance, artists like Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci created some of the most iconic images of Jesus, portraying him with European features. These images were not just artistic interpretations, but became theological and cultural benchmarks, shaping the collective imagination of what Jesus looked like. This Europeanized Jesus became a tool for European powers who used religion to justify their colonial and imperial ambitions, portraying themselves as the rightful bearers of Christian civilization to the heathen world. So the Garden of Eden was in Africa. The first man that was made was an African man. The first woman that was created was an African woman. So, yes, Jesus was born from a place of people of color. Color, that's right. That's right. His blackness doesn't give us prominence. No relevance. No. no relevance. You blacks are still killing one another. That's right. That's right. You young women in Baltimore still do drive-by shootings. Right. Amen. You're still raping. Yeah. Almost every prison I go into in America is almost 80% black. That's right. Which goes to show you Jesus' color had no relevance on your behavior. No, it didn't. You still act like animals and barbarians after you read about Jesus. That's right. Jennings' challenge to the white depiction of Jesus is deeply intertwined with broader issues of racial identity and equality. He posits that seeing Jesus as a white man has a significant psychological impact on non-white believers. It can foster a sense of inferiority and alienation, as the central figure of their faith does not resemble them. Conversely, it can bolster a sense of superiority among white believers, reinforcing racial hierarchies that are at odds with the core Christian teachings of love, equality, and unity. By advocating for a more accurate and diverse portrayal of Jesus, Jennings seeks to dismantle these harmful racial constructs. He emphasizes that Jesus, born in the Middle East, would have had features typical of a person from that region. Recognizing this helps to affirm the humanity and dignity of people of all races and challenges 
the historical misappropriation of religious imagery for racial supremacy. Theologically, Jennings' stance calls for a return to a more authentic understanding of the biblical narrative. The Bible describes Jesus as someone who had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Isaiah 53, 2. This description underscores that Jesus' significance lies not in his physical appearance but in his teachings, actions, and the salvation he offers. By fixating on a white Jesus, believers risk missing the profound, transformative message of the gospel. Furthermore, Jennings' critique extends to the depiction of heaven and its inhabitants. He argues that the same forces that whitewash Jesus have also shaped our perceptions of heaven, often depicted as an ethereal, Eurocentric paradise. This narrow portrayal can limit believers' understanding of the diversity and inclusivity of God's kingdom. Jennings encourages a broader, more inclusive vision that celebrates the multicultural reality of the global Christian community. The impact of Jennings' message resonates beyond the walls of the church. It speaks to broader societal issues of representation, inclusivity, and justice. In a world grappling with the legacies of colonialism, racism, and systemic inequality, re-examining how we depict sacred figures is part of a larger effort to create a more just and equitable society. By challenging the status quo, Jennings invites believers and non-believers alike to reflect on how cultural narratives shape our perceptions and interactions. His call for a diverse representation of Jesus is not merely about correcting historical inaccuracies, but about fostering a culture that values and respects all people, regardless of race. Unsurprisingly, Jennings' views have sparked significant resistance and criticism. Many adherents to traditional depictions of Jesus see these images as integral to their faith and heritage. They argue that changing these depictions could undermine their religious and cultural identity. Moreover, some critics accuse Jennings of politicizing religion, using it as a platform to advance a racial agenda. Jennings, however, counters that his aim is not to politicize but to purify religious practice. He asserts that true Christianity transcends race and nationalism, seeking to unite rather than divide. His focus on diversity is about returning to the roots of the faith, which celebrates the universal message of love and redemption for all humanity. In conclusion, Gino Jennings' challenge to the depiction of Jesus as a white man is a profound call to re-examine deeply held beliefs and traditions. It urges believers to recognize the ways in which cultural and racial biases have shaped religious imagery and to seek a more inclusive, accurate representation of their faith. This challenge is not just about correcting historical inaccuracies, but about affirming the dignity and worth of all people, fostering a more just and equitable society. Jennings' message resonates with the broader movement towards racial and social justice, highlighting the interconnectedness of faith, identity, and cultural representation. As believers and societies grapple with these issues, Jennings' voice serves as a reminder of the transformative power of re-examining and renewing our understanding of sacred truths. Through this process, there is the potential to build a more inclusive, compassionate, and unified world, reflecting the true spirit of the teachings of Jesus Christ.